Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever increasing word feast right here on Facebook or YouTube, whichever social media platform you're watching from today. Abel Damina is my name. There is a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. That's what this broadcast is all about today. So get ready to unlearn so you can relearn the truths concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me also advise you in the course of teaching, certain questions may arise. Just be patient, pay attention, and listen carefully because scriptures will interpret scriptures as you patiently follow the teaching of God's word. You know, the Bible tells us that the time shall come when people shall not endure sound doctrine. So sound doctrine is to be endured. So endure. You know, the word of God also tells us that with meekness, you receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul with meekness. So there's a meekness required and there's endurance required where sound doctrine is concerned. So as the teaching of God's word begins to come, get your notebook, get your pen, follow the teachings. Most of my teachings are in this series because we take time to holistically look at subject matters in the light of Jesus Christ. Let me encourage those of you that are connecting for the first time today, get ready to keep following. We are right here on Facebook and YouTube every day. We're here at 12 noon, GMT plus one. We're here at 6 p.m. We're here at 10 p.m. Also, we are here every day at 10 a.m. GMT plus one. Every day. You don't want to miss any of them because all of these times that I've mentioned, they are designed to equip you with sound knowledge of Jesus Christ. In the midst of a world of uncertainties, with all kinds of messages of fear going all over, you need to stock up. You need to feed yourself with the truth of the gospel so you're rooted and grounded and not moved to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Two more things to introduce to you today. If you are in a city where there is no church, Christ-centered church, where they teach the message of Christ, it is not good for you to be in isolation. The Bible says God has set the solitary in families. God wants you to be a part of a local assembly, a gathering of believers where you can pray together, learn the word of God together, and effectively serve one another and go out to the world and bring the gospel of Christ. If you want to join any of our campuses around the world today, or you want to start one in your own locality and be the lighthouse in that community, all you need to do is shoot me a mail today telling me about your desire to either be a part of a campus or to start one with your location and your phone number. We will get in touch with you and help you either begin one or identify with an existing one. The last thing is I have a lot of books, like you can see them displayed on the screen. All of these are resources written painstakingly to equip you, answer your questions, and bring you clarity of explanation of the Word of God. And if you want to order for any or all of the books today, all you need to do again is shoot email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and we'll respond to you properly and give you all the information you require to acquire these books. I'm excited, very excited. Invite a friend, tag somebody, create a watch party, but today is going to be a powerful time of teaching you the word of his grace. Fasten your seatbelts as I take you on a gospel adventure into a service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy view. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which you have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, Next verse. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? So that word, so great salvation, the emotions there reveals to you that, you know, the place that it has in the plan of God. So salvation is actually a great plan. Now, please pay attention. When words are used in the Bible, they have biblical meaning. 
there will be literal meaning of these things but there is biblical meaning for it and sometimes what people try to do is to allow the literal meaning give it a biblical meaning they superimpose the literal meaning of words on the biblical meaning of words and that's absolutely wrong salvation is a biblical term salvation is an english word with a bible meaning so we must interpret spiritual things with spiritual let the bible interpret the word so the bible is self-interpreting by the spirit of god meaning that salvation is a biblical word so we must look at salvation itself in the light of the word not by experience and we will use the literal meaning in english and greek meaning also and you must remember that greek is a natural language it's not a spiritual language but greek and hebrew they are natural languages but in translating sometimes certain depths can be lost certain depths that's why we always go back to the hebrew and the greek to locate those depths that may be missing in the course of translation look at first timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior next verse who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth so god's will is for all men to be saved and for all men to come to the knowledge of the truth look at second peter chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance so the salvation plan of god is not for most it's not for few it's for all that all should come to repentance you must remember that the bible contains god's thoughts and we must see the bible like that it contains god's thoughts god wants all men to be saved so it is in god's thought that all men should be saved we've seen that in adam all men fell however we are looking at god's plan for salvation and somebody has said how does god want to deliver people so let's get to it romans chapter 8 verse 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose if your bible was mine i will underline the word his purpose according to all that are called according to his purpose 29 for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren 30 moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified 31 pay attention what shall we then say to these things if god be for us who can be against us 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things 33 who shall lay anything to the charge of god's elect it is god that justifieth. 34 who is he that condemneth it is christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of god who also maketh intercession for us 35 who shall separate us from the love of christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword 36 as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter 37 nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us now pay attention to verse 38 for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come now 39 nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord shall be able to separate us from the love of god and where is the love of god which is in christ so the love of god is christ 
or expressed in Christ or dispensed in Christ situated in Christ brother Paul never uses the word I am persuaded because that's personal but in this context he used that word I am persuaded Romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose second timothy chapter 1 verse 9 who had saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in christ jesus before the world began take note of the word purpose again according to his own purpose and grace now read verse 10 for me but is now made manifest by the appearing of our savior jesus christ who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel so he tells us there is a holy calling he has called us with a holy calling according to his purpose not according to our works but according to his purpose and grace so notice the word purpose which is plan he called us according to his purpose which means he called us according to his plan then he also called us according to his grace which means it is according to unmerited favor he called us with a calling that we never deserved so our calling is his plan it's not our plan romans 8:29 for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Three words. Number one, foreknowledge. Number two, predestination. Number three, election. Foreknowledge, predestination, election. And if you observe, foreknowledge comes first. For those of whom he did foreknow, foreknowledge, predestination, and election are concepts of grace you cannot explain them outside grace they are not a stand alone they are concepts of grace and these words are not academic words for knowledge predestination election so let us see the way the bible puts it man in adam man in christ i'm sure you remember that so the concept of foreknowledge predestination and election are concepts of grace now if you observe they seem to be different in the old testament as compared to the epistles and in the course of this you will know why especially the concept of election and predestination they are different and I want you to pay attention because this will solve a lot of questions and answer many issues. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Now observe, God at sundry times and diverse manners, dealing with a progression of revelation, talking about the Old Testament. Diverse times is old testament sundry times old testament diverse manners old testament talking about progressive revelation have in these last days talking about the epistles have in these last days now if you observe in the book of hebrews there are a number of things that makes it look like you know um, some level of selfishness by the writer of the book of hebrews for example in hebrews chapter 8 if you observe brother paul says he's writing a new covenant or making a new covenant with the house of israel and the house of judah he did not include gentiles none of us is house of israel here and none of us is house of judah but the writer of Hebrew says, God says, this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel and the house of Judah in those days. Hebrews chapter 8. That's the first thing you should look out for. Number two, when he was talking about the story of the Jews in Hebrews 11, the only people that there were non-Jews were Noah and Abel. Everybody else in the 
you know hall of faith were all jewish people in hebrews chapter 9 when he says jesus died he didn't say jesus died for the whole world in chapter 9 he said he died for the transgression of those that were under the first testament <laughs> in hebrews 9 verse 15 if i put it up and for this cause he's the mediator of the new testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance so observe that first of all he says the covenant is the house of judah and the house of israel secondly the hall of faith all jewish people thirdly he said the reason why jesus died is for those under the first testament jewish people are you following here now because the writer of hebrews was writing to jewish people specifically non-believing and believing jews so he says for the remission of sins of those under the old testament if paul was writing that book he will have said for the remission of the sins of the whole world that is brother paul's style of right but now to know that it's not brother paul who wrote the book of hebrews look at the bias in the writing of the book of hebrews now whoever wrote it doesn't matter the important thing is that it is written so you will see that it was written to the jews in christ now if you notice again in the book of hebrews you will never see in christ in him it's not anywhere in the entire book of hebrews there's no in christ there is no in him mention yet that material was given by the spirit of god now let's get back to romans chapter 2 verse 29 keep what i said somewhere but he is a jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god so you will discover that abraham was not a jew abraham was not a jew because israel came after jacob the 12 children of jacob formed the 12 tribes of israel and jacob is a son of abraham so abraham was not a jew because there was no israel until jacob jacob was the beginning of the nation of israel the 12 tribes of israel came as the 12 children of jacob now so you will now see that when abraham was promised he was not a jew when god gave abraham a promise he was not a jew i will bless you i will bless those that bless you he didn't do it to abraham because abraham was a jew now there's a difference between jews and hebrew jewish people call themselves hebrew because they are descendants of abraham that's why they call themselves hebrew but otherwise there is a difference so we must study the whole material in christ jesus if you stick to context sometimes you will lose it so therefore we must study the bible in christ so hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 again hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world he has spoken unto us in his son it shows that the bible is read in christ it must be seen in christ so what is foreknowledge in christ predestination in christ election in christ jesus it must be seen in christ now those are biblical concepts look at second corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 many scriptures good for your health wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yea though we have known christ after the flesh yet now henceforth know we him no more next verse therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things are become new so in the second adam we find the new creation and we must never separate bible concept from these facts now romans chapter 5 verse 6 to 8 for when we were yet without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die but god commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us christ died for us now read for me verse 10 and 11 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life 11 and not only so but we also joy in god through our lord jesus christ 
by whom we have now received the atonement. 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Now, please, you must realize that man has always been in the center of God's plan. And all creatures were created for man. You must also realize that the first Adam introduced the concept of sin. How that man, by his free will, walked in disobedience to God. The concept of sin. So now we begin to see humanity as grace. Grace is personified in Christ. Or Christ is the person of grace. Or Christ personifies grace. That is, grace is explained through Christ. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of god that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men to all if your bible was mine to all is a place to underline has appeared to all so election predestination and foreknowledge are concepts of grace like somebody defined grace as god's riches at christ's expense that is what god did for us in christ that is what grace is so let's look at predestination at salvation we have two documents in the bible showing god's dealings with mine two documents number one is the old testament and number two is the epistles and i'm going to just stick to the two of them for the purpose of this study things in the bible always happen in a pattern so there was a pattern to replenish the earth is a pattern god gave adam male and female created he them and told them be fruitful replenish the earth that's a pattern so we see the pattern the pattern is to deal with a people a nation a race in a seed form but the applications have changed in romans chapter 9 where we're going to read and see brother paul was discussing election and he related it with salvation election in romans chapter 9 will be seen as the pattern so in romans chapter 9 we will see a pattern the word election because that word has caused confusion in a lot of people's minds where salvation is concerned the word election is from a greek word that means choice choice or to choose that will mean you will choose among many things so in romans chapter 9 paul begins to explain to us having brought the gospel to the jews and the gentiles you know some people say paul was sent to the gentiles no paul was sent to the jews the gentiles and to the whole world in his mission statement he made it very clear i don't know where they got that from paul apostle to the gentiles peter apostle to the jews all of them were sent to the whole world go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature all of them were to reach the whole world. It's only Peter who personally restricted himself to the Jews. But otherwise, both of them were sent to Jews and Gentiles. All of them. Now, so in Acts chapter 9, Paul is presenting to Jews and Gentiles why salvation is for everybody. Why salvation is for everybody. Notice again, foreknowledge comes before predestination so you look at foreknowledge to know it before it happens foreknowledge doesn't mean you made it happen foreknowledge simply means you knew before it happens you were not instrumental in the decision you only had a knowledge okay you only had a knowledge so foreknowledge comes before predestination 
predestination is what you determine so those he for new he predestinated give me romans now you need to pay attention if you miss this one you shouldn't have come to church romans chapter 9 we'll start reading from verse 1 i say the truth in christ i lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the holy ghost two that i have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart three for i could wish that myself were accursed from christ for my brethren my kinsmen according to the flesh four who are israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of god and the promises five whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh christ came who is over all god bless forever amen six not as though the word of god hath taken none effect for they are not all israel which are of israel seven neither because they are the seed of abraham are they all children but in isaac shall thy seed be called that is a place to underline in isaac shall thy seed be called so now brother paul wants to explain the spiritual implication of israel from natural implication give me verse 8 that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of god but the children of the promise are counted for seed the children of the promise and at that point he reduced the relevance of jews now look at verse 9 carefully for this is the word of promise at this time will i come and sarah shall have a son verse 10 and not only this but when rebecca also had conceived by one even by our father isaac read verse 11 for the children being not yet born again read it carefully for the children being not yet born repeat that sentence again for the children being not yet born now move forward neither having done any good or evil again repeat that statement neither having done any good or evil move on that the purpose of god according to election might stand yes not of works but of him that calleth now that verse is pregnant is anybody here that verse for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil but that the purpose the purpose of god according to election might stand not of works but of him that call it tayabada underline the purpose of god if you observe i've been talking about purpose from the beginning carelessly you begin to see what purpose may be and somebody says is that not the sovereignty of god god just decides what he wants no that's not what is there pay attention observe that brother paul is talking salvation he now takes the jew back to history he takes us back to the history of israel israel being a pattern of god's thought towards humanity a pattern of god's thought towards humanity that the purpose of god now second timothy 1 9 who had saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our work again not according to our work again not according to our work proceed but according to his own purpose if and your grace. bible was mine that's a place to underline not according to our works works taken out but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in christ jesus in god giving us in christ jesus in god of course you know in god is before the world began what is the purpose there the purpose of choosing jacob and not esau mm. go back to romans 9 11 again for the children being not yet born having neither done any good or evil but that the purpose of god according to election might stand not of works but of him that call it 
the purpose of choosing Jacob and not Esau was not because God hated Esau after all the people have not done anything but so that election might stand not of works but of him whom he calls so Jacob and Esau we are set a pattern they were set a pattern that salvation will be independent of man's choice that salvation will be done effected outside the purview of a man's deed now take your eyes from Jacob let's read verse 12 it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger mm. Jacob I love the word love is the word prefer Jacob I prefer and it was said unto her because I prefer Jacob the elder shall serve the younger yet Jacob and Esau have not done anything but that the purpose of election may stand think think all right verse 12 it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger 13 as it is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I hated of course you know those words are not exactly it's for lack of good translation it means I just prefer Jacob to Esau right now take your eyes from personalities 14 what, what shall we say then yes is there unrighteousness with god god forbid all right so that is not unrighteous okay next verse for he said to moses i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy and i will have compassion on whom i will have compassion now god chose jacob so that esau will be blessed god chose jacob so that Esau will be blessed. Write it down. If you don't understand, write it. So that when you understand, you can go back and check it again. <laughs> God chose Jacob so that Esau will be blessed. He was not teaching salvation, but God's purpose of election. Now, remember, God's plan is in Christ. Don't forget that remember god's plan is effected outside the purview of a man's deed read verse 15 again for me for he said to moses i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy and i will have compassion on whom i will have compassion so man's works are not needed i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy i will have compassion on whom I will have compassion, man's contribution, man's performance, man's work not required. So man's work has been reduced to nothing. Now, 16 to 21, pay attention. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay but, O man, who art thou repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Now, pay more attention. 22. What if God, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory? 24. Even us whom he hath called, 
not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Again? Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Again? Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So now, he was relating an event to show the purpose of God. Why did God do it? Why did God choose Jacob, not Esau? Notice, he was not talking about salvation. But he was talking about how God chose Abraham, chose Sarah. Why? That the purpose of election might stand. He chose Jacob, Abraham, Sarah for the purpose of election. God is setting a pattern in this story for the salvation of humanity. Did you just see what I just did? Did you see what I just did? Okay. God is setting a pattern. That is, his dealing with humanity has been without works. They were not born. He chose the younger. If you are choosing the elder, it will be because of age. We will say, okay, it's even natural for him to choose the elder. After all, it is the elder before the younger. If you are choosing the elder, you will say, well, it's natural. But he chose the younger. The younger that was not qualified by age. From that point of Genesis, he began to set a pattern for the salvation of humanity. From that choosing of the younger over the elder, he was setting a pattern of salvation for humanity. The same thing with Israel. The same thing with Sarah and Abraham. They were patterns. Don't forget, it is still the same today in pattern. But the application has changed. Did I say that? In verse 24, Even us, whom he had called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Give me verse 25. As he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people which Ossi, were not... Osi, there is Hosea. I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. Alright, 26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called, there shall they be called the children of the living God. 27. Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. 28. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. 29. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. Now, Tati. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after the righteousness have attained Again, the to, Gentiles. Which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness. Again, the Gentiles. Which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness. Again, the Gentiles. Which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness. Even the righteousness which is of faith. They didn't follow after righteousness, but they are righteous. That the purpose of election without works may stand that jacob who is the younger not qualified will be the one to be served by the elder for the purpose of election now give me 31 let this thing open but israel which followed after the law of righteousness again but israel which followed after the law of righteousness uh -huh. has not attained to the law of righteousness they followed after they did not attain we didn't follow after we attained not of works but according to his purpose and grace are we are we are we together on the same okay now please pay attention because i'm going somewhere with this now god gave a law to israel they couldn't keep it god gave no law to the gentiles they attained what israel were trying to attain by the law without the law you didn't hear what I just said. God gave Israel a law by which they will be righteous. They couldn't get righteous. Then God gave the Gentiles no law. 
and without law the gentiles became righteous without law which israel with the law could not become that the purpose of election might stand why is it like that verse 32 wherefore because they sought it not by faith but as it were by the works of the law for they stumbled at that stumbling stone while we the gentiles believed and were righteous they came by the law they tried to use works and never qualified that the purpose of election may stand what is election that election will be without performance just like jacob with nothing became senior while senior became junior that a man without performance who believes is righteous while a man with works who broke one can never be righteous is it getting clear here now because we're going somewhere with this pay attention to the next thing i want to say so god says i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy that is god is setting a pattern of his mercy and a pattern of his grace these are patterns i am going to save humanity with no condition no inclusion no preclusion the purpose is choice to fulfill god's choice so mercy is a function of god's choice mercy is a function of god's choice i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy there is nothing you can ever do that will make me have mercy on you i will have mercy just because i have decided to have mercy you cannot pray and make me have mercy you cannot fast and get my mercy you cannot sow seed and get my mercy you cannot even fast and die and get my mercy my mercy will come to you in spite of and irrespective of you it is going to come because of that is who i am and any one of you that think you can buy my mercy you will be merciless but those of you that agree that you don't qualify you agree that you don't deserve it you agree that you're not good at all my mercy is on his way somebody shout i hear i hear so that's why it says i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy that is there's nothing you will do to attract my mercy have you had preachers who say keys to bringing the mercy of god is another gospel there is nothing you can do to get god's mercy god's mercy is his choice so mercy is a function of god's choice grace also is a function of god's choice in romans chapter 10 verse 8 but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach the word of faith is in your heart and in your mouth 11 for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed anybody who believes will not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek repeat that again for there is no difference between the jew and the greek one more time for there is no difference between the jew and the greek so when you hear somebody say you know jewish people there is an anointing is a lie there is no difference between the jew and the greek so you don't need to go to israel to get water you don't need to go to israel to pray on the wailing wall it's idolatry israel is as good as orukanam behind here there is no difference So God's mercy is his choice. Not man's choice. The reason for explaining election in Romans 9 is to let you see that God uses individuals to represent a nation to show his choice. Sarah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and that related to Israel as a nation. He now explains that the Jews failed and the Gentiles failed. 
So nobody is earning anything. The Jews failed. The Gentiles failed. So nobody is going to earn, earn it. Nobody can earn it. Romans 11.30 For as ye in times past has not believed God, yet now have obtained mercy through their unbelief. Did you see that? They have obtained mercy through their unbelief. You didn't see it. You didn't see that. They have obtained mercy through their unbelief. Did you see that? They have obtained mercy how? Through their unbelief. Now read verse 31 for me. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. So even the Jewish man that didn't believe, when they saw mercy reaching you, they believed. That's why Jacob is the blessing of Esau. Give me verse 32. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. <laughs> Glory to God. He has concluded them all, Jew and Gentile. We are in unbelief. Why? That he might have mercy on all of them. Remember 31. Watch 31. Even so, have this also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy 32 for God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all so the same God is rich unto all Jew and Gentile no preclusion no exclusion read for me Romans 9 16 so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. That's it. So now, election proves that it is not a man's obedience. It has nothing to do with a man's obedience. It's God's mercy. It's not a man's choice. Why did he send Jesus? That is God's choice to fulfill election. Jesus is God's choice to fulfill the purpose of election. And we will see that under the Old Testament election and grace refers to individuals in the Old Testament. When you read the New Testament, it refers to the whole world. So, it is grace for individuals in the Old Testament. It is grace for the whole world in the New Testament. So what happened to those individuals was for God to set a pattern for saving the world through grace. A pattern for saving the world through grace. He used Isaac as a type of grace. He used Israel as a type of his grace. And now he shows you that Israel in the flesh is not saved because of Abraham. They are not saved because of Abraham. Rather, because of the promise of salvation given to all men. The reason why an Israeli will be saved is not because he came from Abraham. It is because the same promise given to the Gentile is the same promise given to the Jew. Meaning, just like the Gentile must believe devoid of works, the Jew must believe the void of works. So the dichotomy between the Jew and the Gentile has collapsed. No inferior, no superior. That the purpose of election may start. If it's getting clear, can I hear a good amen? Now, please watch this. So what we read in Romans chapter 9 is purpose. And this purpose is for all in Christ Jesus purpose for all so no preclusion no exclusion nobody is in a class no special privilege everybody comes under the mercy and grace of god in christ now that takes us to ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god to the saints which are at ephesus and to the faithful in christ jesus Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now we must understand the in Christ concept. In Christ, in Christ, the signature of the Pauline theology, the in Christ concept. The in Christ concept is a concept of grace and identification. Read for me verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. According as he has chosen us where? In him. So, if choice here is the same as election, if choice is to pick one and leave another, who then do you choose in Christ? He will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. He will have compassion on whom he will have compassion. So now there will be no physical criteria for obtaining mercy. The Gentile will have to believe. The Jew will have to believe. Both Jew and Gentile will now become recipients of God's mercy. Because he has concluded all of them in unbelief. So who then is chosen? Huh? Who? Huh? He that believeth? He that think, think. Who? Everybody. Everybody is chosen. In Christ but everybody is not in Christ so to actualize and enjoy the benefit of your choice the reason why we preach the gospel so that you can believe and receive what is yours where in Christ now verse 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Six. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Who is the beloved? Who is the beloved? Huh? Christ. So, look at that with Christ. The in Christ mentality. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted where? In Christ. Our acceptance is in Christ. All right? Read verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. 8. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself. 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Eleven. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own Our will. Our predestination is according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. What he means is the same thing he said in Romans 9 is the same thing he's repeating in Ephesians chapter 1 that salvation is my work salvation is my choice whom to save is my delight whom to choose is my desire that's what god is saying salvation is my work i don't need your contribution salvation is my choice you don't have to pray for me to choose you salvation is my delight and whom i choose is my desire according to his good pleasure okay so, superintending over the affairs of man as God. Referring to history, you will see in the Bible that God is working all things from the patterns to the reality after the counsel of his will. Jacob I love, Esau I hate. No pre prehistory, no record. That's just the way I want it. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It is not of he that will let. If you like fast hundred days, it does not qualify anything. I will choose you if I decide to choose you. Choosing you will be according to my pleasure. 
and I have decided that all of humanity is chosen in Christ. I don't care which village you come from and I don't care your history or your background. All I care for is Christ. My election is Christ. My predestination is Christ. My foreknowledge is Christ. So if you want to be my chosen one in Christ, if you want to be the elected one in Christ, because all I know is Christ, and Christ died for the whole world. nobody can be elected outside christ so no preclusion no inclusion god's election is christ ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 listen to that reading intelligently according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that's chosen what... us where where are we chosen when before so before anybody was born the children not yet born they have not done good or bad he has chosen us in him before we were born how in christ look at it according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy who is holy christ and without blame who is without blame christ so when we come into christ we are holy and without blame what is his is ours as he is so are we he has no sin i have no sin why i am in christ that the purpose of election might stand is it clear is it clear can you see why you cannot lose salvation where are you losing it from before the children not yet born the children not yet born they have not done good they have not done bad he has made up his mind while we were yet sinners he has made up his mind if you like sin all you want to see but you will be saved in christ that the purpose of election might stand Leave this thing. Mengala no mahata. When you understand this kind of things we are sharing, you, you won't even be thinking of backsliding. God knew that Jacob will do 419. Yet in the pattern he chose him. He knew that Jacob would collect his brother's birthright. He looked at it and said it doesn't matter jacob i love i love you i love you uh, no condition no preclusion no inclusion no exclusion and no works required in christ that the purpose of election might start let me round up so i can close this service I believe that with these few points of mine I have convinced you that you are chosen and it is too late you can never lose salvation it's too late man you've been chosen already if Jacob like let Jacob be stealing Jacob I love That God will save man outside of works. That's the purpose of election. That a man will be saved without his contribution. That is the purpose of election. That's the purpose. An understanding of that concept of grace takes away the fear of losing anything. Just understanding that concept. Because that concept of grace is a concept that assures you I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have it is not of him that will it, neither of him that run it. 
it is of the Lord that showeth mercy according as he had chosen us where in him when before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love now pay attention to verse 5 having having predestinated us unto the adoption of children how if any man be in Christ by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will so God worked out his pleasure he's working out all things according to his purpose and his purpose is to save us in spite of us he works it like that to save us in spite of us Ephesians 1 12 and 13 pay attention that we should be to the praise of his glory who, who first, first trusted in Christ who first trusted next verse in whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of so truth. you trusted when you had all you were required to do was to believe what you had so after you had the word of truth the gospel of your salvation you trusted in whom also after that so you know that the trust is believing in whom also after that you believed the moment you believed you were bam sealed with the holy spirit of promise Did you understand what we are talking about? The moment you believe, you will are sealed. Bam! This one is my property. This one is booked down eternally. Zagola Barakata. Is there anybody here with the seal of the Holy Ghost? Get on your feet and shout glory in this building. That the purpose of election might stand. Has it stood now? Have you been elected? Have you been selected? Have you been selected? Where are you selected? Amen. I said amen. When you understand these concepts, you come to a place of total assurance of salvation. That's the whole essence. All fears gone all doubt gone shadows gone clarity of persuasion in christ saved forever how long are you saved i was teaching and one guy was following my teachings he was following my teachings he was enjoying the teachings he was enjoying the teachings he was enjoying the teachings soteria he kept enjoying i didn't know that he is among the people that don't believe in one saved always saved so he had followed me to a point where he had seen all the scriptures clear in his face. Then I now said, a believer can never lose salvation. Then the guy typed on Facebook, oh, are you preaching once saved, always saved? <laughs> oh, that's the way I put it. Oh, are you preaching once saved, always saved? Then he now added, but I have gone too far to go back. <laughs> this thing is sweet, oh. I'm sure the spirit of God in him was bearing witness. He began to feel the sweetness of salvation. He began to feel the joy of salvation. Then his mentality kicked in. But now it's too late. Because likewise the spirit also beareth witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. If sons, then heirs of God. Joint heirs with Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. 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 I mean, you hear 
this kind of message and your seat cannot contain you you want to somersault you want to jump you want to flip amen save forever in christ jesus amen father we declare for everybody hearing the sound of my voice especially those that are still battling with mental cages every mental cage is broken in the name of jesus we command the assurance of salvation the clarity of your thoughts we command the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened the god of this world take your hands off the minds of men that you have kept in darkness and we command the light of this message to shine in the heart of all those hearing the sound of my voice all over the world barriers are broken darkness is dispelled in the name of jesus and for us here lord we rejoice that we are sealed with that holy ghost of promise and we rejoice that everything in christ belongs to us so we receive the manifestation and we rejoice in the realities that we have in christ thank you for the blessing thank you for grace thank you for the purpose of election established in our hearts and we give you praise for answer prayer in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen on a note of finality Give the Lord some crazy shout in this building. Glory! Amen! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a service. What a time of learning. A time of unlearning and a time of relearning the word of his grace. Brother Paul says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified. The word has come with clarity. Please don't go away. If there's anything that was wrong in your life, the word of God has gone forth to fix it. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke pain. I rebuke confusion. I rebuke discomfort. Now, receive healing. Receive a miracle where you need one today. In the name of Jesus, receive a miracle. I clear every confusion out of your life. We rebuke fear and the hold of darkness is broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, I'm excited. Now listen very carefully, I want to encourage you. I have a lot of books, like you can see them displayed on the screen. All of these are resources written painstakingly to equip you, answer your questions, and bring you clarity of explanation of the Word of God. Shoot email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and we'll respond to you properly and give you all the information you require to acquire these books. You can order them from our office, either the books, the CDs, or the DVDs, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Shoot us a mail today with your orders, and we will ensure that we reach out to you today. If you're in a city where there's no church, where the message of Christ like this is preached or taught, that is already an opportunity for you to serve Jesus by getting involved with ministry. This is the way it works. All you need to do is shoot us a mail. We will take time and equip you and prepare you to begin an extension of our church ministry called a campus where other believers in your locality can assemble with you in your own venue and learn together with you the message, pray with you, and together all of you can reach out to more people with the truth of the gospel. Or you're in a place where you desire to just belong to the campus, shoot us a mail with your location today. We'll connect you to the nearest campus to where you are of our ministry. It always a joy to serve you the grace of God. Always a joy to bring you clarity, to equip you, to build you up in the knowledge of Christ. I'm excited today. Looking forward to hearing from every one of you today. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next broadcast that comes up in a few hours from now. Share with people about what God is doing on this platform. And until we connect with you again, enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Amen.